Hello everyone. In this presentation, we shall be discussing about hyperinflation. We shall see what is hyperinflation and what causes hyperinflation. So the main points in this presentation are going to be what is hyperinflation, what causes hyperinflation, or what does or how does hyperinflation occur. We'll also see what are the key ingredients that is or are necessary to cause hyperinflation. We shall take up the historical cases of hyperinflation in Zimbabwe and hyperinflation in Germany, that is the Weimar Republic, and hyperinflation in Venezuela, that's more recent. And also finally, we shall see how to fix hyperinflation situations that arise in countries. What is hyperinflation? Hyperinflation in short is a very high and accelerating inflation that is usually accompanied by a rapid and excessive increase in prices of goods, services and real assets. There is no specific level beyond which inflation is classified as hyperinflation but roughly a ballpark number of 50 percent inflation level per month is when hyperinflation is hyperinflation is considered basically inflation is considered as in the hyperinflation territory just for reference us normally aims for inflation levels of around 2% per annum. India, which is a developing country, aims for inflation of around 5% per annum. While in the last hyperinflationary episode of, in Venezuela that happened in 2019, the inflation levels reached to almost 283,000 percent in April 2019. That is hyperinflation. So what causes hyperinflation or how does hyperinflation occur? You have to understand this, that hyperinflation is a highly unusual phenomena. It's not every day we get hyperinflation. And hence the trigger really is not immediate wrong government or central bank fiscal or monetary policies. Well, because otherwise most of the nations, most of the times would be in hyperinflation because these two entities make so many mistakes. So when the government expands its fiscal deficit uh, and prints money via central banks, it will not cause hyperinflation. Sure, it can cause high inflation, but for hyperinflation, it, it may not cause hyperinflation. For that, high, because for that to happen, hyperinflation is almost always caused due to a supply shock, or excessive buildup of foreign debt over a period of time, resulting in a currency crisis. Now, why do I say that? Let's look at a scenario. Here, let's say that, a, that, the, cent, that the government of a country increases its fiscal deficit. Now, in order to fund that fiscal deficit, prints money via the central bank. So the money supply or the credit in the economy increases. That means the demand in the economy will increase. Now to get rid of this demand, let's assume in the first case that the production capacity in the economy is not sufficient. So Unfortunately, due to, the, to cater the increased demand, the supply doesn't change, which means more demand, less supply, increased credit in the economy means we, we get higher inflation. There can be a second scenario, of course, in which the supply, the economy is still not at its optimum level. And so in this case, the supply does increase, which means there will not really be uh, an increase in inflation. So let's 
go further in the first scenario where the inflation increases. And also no, we note one thing here that the debt that the government takes is in domestic currency, which is important. Let's continue. To cater to this demand, increase in demand, since domestic supply is insufficient, the imports increase. And that means the foreign exchange or the exchange rate of the country tends to start to decline. And due to this, the inflation increases further. Due to higher inflation, due to this particular higher inflation would in turn mean that demand tends to fall. So think about it. A higher demand meets the roadblock of supply in the domestic market, which led to increase in imports, in turn increase in inflation, which actually destroys the demand. So the circle is complete. The demand that led to inflation, that very inflation killed the demand. Of course, this cycle can be made worse by wrong monetary policies, increasing money supply, increased demand further. But this, you get the idea how natural corrective measures in the economy can elevate the inflation pressures in the economy. And so, inflation comes down finally. Now let's have a look at the scenario where there's a supply shock in the economy. So here, the supply of the economy dramatically declines. And when I say dramatically, it means decline of 30, 40, 50%, which has happened. It's not common, but it has happened. And that's why hyperinflation is not so common. Supply declines dramatically. That means, however, even though supply has declined, the credit or the money supply in the economy is still the same. That means the demand in the economy is still the same. Demand is same, but corresponding supply has declined dramatically. That means there certainly will be inflation and price rise because credit and demand is more than the supply available. And hence, like previously we saw, the imports are going to rise. These rising imports, again, like previously we saw, will lead to exchange fall in the exchange rate for the country. Now, here lies the difference. Unlike previously, here, the demand will not fall substantially. Now, wh what is the reason behind this? Remember, in the first case, the demand increased due to government's increase in fiscal deficit. So that was the excess demand. In this case, there is no excess demand. The demand is still the same. Instead, the supply has fallen dramatically. So, for example, there, there is always demand for some goods in the economy. I mean, people do have to eat, right? People do have to wear clothes. People would need some medical med medical supplies. These are some basic demands which cannot be culled beyond a point in the economy. They will remain. And so, in this particular case, since there, there was no excess demand, but the supply has declined dramatically, unlike previously, the demand remains almost the same and doesn't decline. And that's a very important distinction. And so, to cater to this demand, since the domestic supply cannot come online, the country starts taking in more foreign debt, which increases the country's foreign debt. And due to this, the exchange rate declines even further. A fall in exchange rate forces the interest rates to rise in the market. So, increasing inflation, increasing interest rates, a fall in exchange rate, all these contribute to further supplies shock in the economy. 
because the capital domestic capital has become even more expensive the, pr the prices of inputs have become even more expensive and so supply has become it will eventually get even more less in the economy so supply is reclining even further demanding demand almost remaining constant would lead to finally a hyperinflationary episode in the economy now let's look how excessive foreign debt is what triggers the hyperinflationary episode in the economy now here the country's foreign debt increases dramatically in the economy which in turn means basically the country is importing large amount of goods then it's exporting so that leads to finally a, a waterfall decline in, in its exchange rate that would mean the prices in the economy would rise the interest rates as we saw previously again would rise and both all both these things contribute to a sharp fall in the supply so like previously we saw wherein first of all a supply shock in the economy led to a foreign debt and a currency crisis finally leading up to hyperinflation in this case the foreign debt and currency crisis led to a supply shock in the economy and which finally led to hyperinflation as again the demand remains constant because it's space demand unlike the unlike the first case where, where we saw the excessive demand caused by fiscal deficit again here it's the base demand it's not excessive demand so that remains almost constant leading to hyperinflation the points to note as in the first scenario i told you the government intervention created excessive demand leading to inflation so some inflation caused by excessive demand led to the demand destruction as we saw in the second scenario or in the first hyperinflationary scenario the demand was not excessive like this because the supply it's the supply they collapsed by let's say around 50 percent this caused the inflation to spike up because the, the demand was not excessive but the supply fell this caused the inflation to spike up so even the increase in inflation could not really destroy that demand unlike previously and as we saw the crisis worsened due to an accompanying debt crisis so generally we see that hyperinflationary episodes are accompanied by supply shocks and debt crisis or foreign exchange crisis as you may call it and, the, and this is because the, yes, since, the, since the supply locally cannot cater to demand countries start importing goods and that import of goods piles up the foreign debt and makes exchange rate tumble in the third scenario or in the second hyperinflationary scenario we saw how foreign debt led to a increase built up in foreign debt coupled with the falling exchange rate caused a hyperinflationary scenario this again was coupled with the limited productive capacity of the economy we saw this scenario play out in venezuela this hyper inflation in venezuela 2019 so let's look at some famous examples from the past some famous hyper inflation examples from the past and we'll notice that in all these cases hyper inflation has been caused due to first either a supply shock to start with or excessive foreign debt or a currency crisis to start with so the weimar republic the famous hyperinflation in germany or hyperinflation in weimar republic after world war ii germany lost its major industrial production re region of rural valley to france it was occupied by french forces and so there was an instant supply shock in germany the supply fell from 30 to 50 percent by some estimates and this was made worse again by foreign increased foreign debt in germany 
and by wrong government's monetary and fiscal policies at that time the awareness was lesser leading to hyperinflation similarly hyperinflation in zimbabwe was caused due to president mukabe's policy of giving farmland that were largely under the authority of its white population to the natives who unfortunately didn't know how to cultivate it so that led to a supply shock instantly of fruit pro- food products le- leading to hyperinflation and finally in venezuela that was triggered by debt crisis in venezuela which was largely in foreign currency and this was aggravated due to the supply bottlenecks in the economy leading up to hyper in, hyperinflationary scenario in all three cases we saw how the hyperinflation is caused by either a supply shock to begin with or a debt crisis so what could be the cure for hyperinflation let me tell you that there is no there is no easy solution for hyperinflation hyperinflation cure is highly painful so to cure it first of all the governments must drastically cut its fiscal deficit this in order to reduce whatever demand they can reduce they have to introduce capital and current account controls to stop foreign currency from going out to maintain some foreign currency for critical imports they have to approach international funds like imf for foreign currency loans to replenish their forex reserves they have to increase income tax and luxury taxes to ensure that the demand for luxury goods or stuff like that reduces because we see that the supply capacity of the economy is limited so we don't want the supply to cater to luxury goods and luxury products instead we want that supply to cater to more relevant or more common goods and so the government has to provide incentives and cheaper credit to produce those goods in the economy and finally the currency basis which is the main crux and problem of hyper hyperinflation or inflation for that matter has to be changed the country can adopt a foreign currency or foreign currency standard or use a foreign currency directly for some time at least so in conclusion we see that hyperinflation is highly unusual and hence the trigger is not due to immediate wrong government fiscal or monetary policies the trigger for hyperinflation is almost always a supply shock or a shock caused by a currency crisis due to excessive foreign debt build up over a period of time almost every hyperinflationary episode triggered due to a supply shock ends up being a debt or a foreign exchange currency crisis similarly every foreign exchange cr- crisis or a foreign debt crisis ends up being a hyperinflationary episode due to severe supply constraints in the domestic economy and even as even as immediate wrong for fiscal and monetary policies may not create hyperinflation but certainly such wrong policies aggravate the situation in this scenario so thank you very much for watching this presentation do subscribe if you like such content and comment in case you have any questions thank you